Today's Neuroscience, Tomorrow's History. An interview with Professor Elizabeth Warrington. Maybe I could start at the beginning and say that in my first few years here, I was working as a PhD student. I was working on a problem of um, visual processing. I was working on the problem of uh, why patients sometimes uh, complete objects across their blind field. And then <coughs> quite uh, soon after this, in 1960, I took over the responsibility of providing a clinical service to uh, the neurologists and neurosurgeons uh, here at the National Hospital. Back in the 50s and 60s, I think it's probably fair to say that English neurology was very much concentrated here uh, in Queen Square. Uh, there'd be small departments in uh, Bristol and in Oxford, uh, but what's happened over the years is that every uh, medical centre now has a department of neurology, but this wasn't the case back then, uh, and all manner of neurological cases uh, came here. It was easily the largest neurological uh, centre in the, in the country, and probably the world. Rare cases of this or that will come here from all over the country. Um, people seeking a second opinion, people seeking a third opinion. Um, so uh, from a research psychologist's point of view, there was very much a critical mass here. So it made it possible to do these uh, group studies comparing 30 patients with right hemisphere lesions, 30 patients with uh, left parietal lesions, uh, which really uh, was not viable to do elsewhere. Essentially, my job was to uh, assess patients for the neurologists. And the neurologists here, uh, being European neurologists, were interested uh, in all manner of cognitive deficits. These patients might uh, have uh, spatial difficulties, reading difficulties, language difficulties, uh, whatever. So you're seeing a patient for the first time and you're testing their reading or you're testing this and you think, oh, I haven't seen that before. Uh, I wonder uh, what the problem is. Mm -hmm.